everybody, welcome to Geek Storm. I'm Sean Hilton, owner of Comics Q, founder of the Kokomo Con, and one of the great members of Geek Street, located in the heart of downtown Kokomo on the 100 block. Just find downtown Kokomo. And like that's prime real estate, like gonna, it's boardwalk or oh, park place. Of, of, of we have raised the value of this. Uh, <laughs> what, do, what do I owe if I land on uh, something yeah. like this? <laughs> you just got to come in and buy some cool stuff yeah. from Comics Cube. Kokomo Toys and Collectibles, our good friends at American Dream and Hi-Fi, a used record store. The uh, Chapter 2 books or Kingdom Cards and Games. You can find all those things run by individuals, not under just one giant roof where everybody thinks they know every little thing about all those things because they don't. And don't be fooled by stores that try to tell you that they know games, toys, books, records. They don't. So come to the place where... They actually have experts in those individual fields. Mike! What? What is Who? going on this Who? week? Oh, so much. So much is happening. Uh, look at If you look at March in, in general, yeah. holy cow. Whew, I'm going oh. to get me some uh, Godzilla oh. on King Kong action. You get your Godzilla Kong. Woohoo! You just got your WandaVision uh, finale. finale. I got a Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah, I'm Disney's looking forward to that. Big entry into the animated scene this year. You got your Justice League. Woohoo! Uh, Zack Snyder's and then Justice one more thing, League. One more thing I can't remember. Is Bobby that March? Winter Soldier starts in two weeks. Wow. We get a one week break between WandaVision. You get one week to get your uh, get your house in order. And you're still going to get something then, during boom! that week. Boom! What are we getting that week? They're doing their Marvel, their assembled thing, which is like. Assembled. Which is like a Man- Some assembly Mandalorian's gallery or whatever Avengers it's called. Avengers by Ikea. They're going to do that after every one of the series. They're going to do a making of type of thing for each okay. one of the series. So you'll the, get that. The talking of Wanda? Yeah. yeah. Is it Talking Dead? I don't I don't think so. Is that what it was? No. Oh, that's what their show was called. They're Talking Dead. Yes, yes. After every Walking Dead episode. Yes. They could do that now. With, I mean, if Disney... They could break it down. Seriously, I mean, why not? Yeah. Especially with WandaVision, when we were every episode, we were talking. We were dissecting. You would it. think since people are doing it, when podcasts and whatnot, that no. they would say, hey, you know, let's go ahead and make our own, make a little extra cash. I mean, how much pop can we get each time we bring on, like, one actor, one Avenger? Right. You know, hey, this week, you know, we're right. going to have blah, blah, blah. Hopefully not Paul Bettany, because I'm, I'm a little upset with him what for his... Do? Well, you know, and if we're going to talk about WandaVision, it, yeah. we, just, we just saw the last episode earlier, uh-huh. earlier this morning. It just aired this morning. There was, there was speculation, you know, he, okay, here's... I'm very on record as saying, don't worry about your head movie, and... Uh, Your fan fiction is yeah, playing up yeah. there. Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't worry about this guy showing up, no engineer showing up, or uh, whoever. But, you know, when Bettany comes out and says, oh, the cameo that hasn't even shown up yet, and I'm not talking about Doctor Strange, but the cameo that doesn't even show, hasn't even shown up yet, uh, just an amazing actor that I've always wanted to work with, you know? When he, when he trolls you like that, yeah. that's deliberate yes. and mean. It's mean. It's mean. That's funny. No, no, it's he mean. He wanted to work with himself. It's mean. Because of the white vision, regular right. vision. Right, yes, yes. I thought that was awesome. It was it's fun. It's funny-ish, except given the given the the climate that this show already has with, with the rampant speculation, which is all fan-produced, okay? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I mean, they, di- they did throw the Pietro thing in there, and that was a little, a little scroogey, but uh, it wasn't like... And the payoff was... <laughs> the, there was no payoff. There was no payoff. <laughs> Ralph. So, Your payoff was Ralph. Okay. Yeah. Boner. Boner. <laughs> Boner. B-O-H-N-E-R. That's right. Uh, yeah. So uh, you got to see it. I got to see it. Yeah. It was probably the longest episode of the thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't feel as if that extra length did anything in right. particular. Right. Um, you know, spoilers. It's all spoilers. So you, if you haven't seen it yet, do not listen to what we're about to talk about. Right. Um, you know, this was nine episodes, I believe, going into this whole thing. So yes. We had a lot of time to build up. Yes. We did that. It was incredibly well done. We mm-hmm. had appearances by a lot of your B and even C Marvel actors, such as Darcy and mm-hmm. Jimmy Woo or mm-hmm. James Wu. Mm-hmm. Um, the introduction of Monica was a big deal. Yep. But we let up all of that. Now, as you said, the thing in your head about people, and I think this has hit Star Wars in particularly, people have their fan fiction in their head of what they think should right. be on the screen. Right. And they're disappointed when it doesn't happen and go so far as to get very vocal. Right. I didn't have that problem with this. I just didn't feel that the payoff for the nine episodes mm. was that. Other parts of the series had kind mm. of that right. bam. Right. This felt a little um, underdone. Like I get what they were trying to do with it. Right. Our vision versus vision clash right. was like um, there's. That's no big deal to me. Well, but but what happened to him? He took off. 
He's still out there. I he, understand, but that's the thing, though. Yeah, yeah. Like that, there's no closure on that. You don't one. know, and, and he'll, um, he'll show up. The whole up thing sometime. about I've got a friend, I'm going to call him, kind of thing. Right, right. I mean, it's not that we're disappointed with what who they brought in. Right. They just literally never brought anyone right. in. Jimmy gets on the phone in this episode and goes, "Hey, Cliff, I right. need help." I honestly still think no that I've got a, that I've got a friend. I'll give him a call. I still think that's a character, and we're going to see him down the road. Blue. I really, I really feel like it. Blue Marvel. I, th- I really feel like it's Blue Marvel. Blue Marvel. Makes yeah. sense. Uh, anyway, uh, you know the show. The show to me, after having watched it all, and I had planned on watching all the episodes again wow. yesterday. You are very dedicated. Well, I've seen, I've seen them all twice because I'll watch them. I can't not watch I, them. Yeah, I've watched them all once. I can't not not watch them in the morning because I normally. Like most people, sit on the porcelain throne and look at my phone in the morning. And if and if I get on there, yeah, I'm talking about the toilet. Really? If, if I get on there and uh, Twitter, are you on there? I don't know. A, hel- a healthy you, amount of time. You know? <laughs> well, I I would be on there long enough to get spoiled looking at Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Oh. And since I can't stay off my phone until Kyan gets home from school or until Casey gets home from work, I normally watch it in the morning by myself. And then when they when they're able to watch it, I'll watch it again with them. Except for today's, obviously. Why, so, why can't you stay off your phone? Because I'm addicted to it. Oh, okay. I mean, that's that's absolutely fine. So, <laughs> so I, I went without mine for like two nights as I kept leaving it at the store. And instead of turning the car around, I'm like, I really don't care. So having had the advantage of watch, I'll watch it in the morning, uh-huh. and then I'll get on my phone and look at uh, the spoilers, spoilers or ex- explanations or things I've for. missed. And so I, I see okay. them again, and then I can explain them to to them as we go. But as we as as I've gone through it now, I really feel like. Even though you got 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 27 minutes, 87 minutes, whatever, and you get up to get up to 50 finally, they're doing a six-hour show. It feels like it's a two-half movie to me. It feels yes. it, it feels like it's all about grief, all about leading up to why didn't why didn't uh, why didn't Vision get the kind of uh, send off or the kind of recognition that that uh, um, uh, Black Widow or uh, Cap or Iron Man got. And also, then we turn into okay. Now it's the evolution of Wanda. This is her her grieving, and then you know they're the catalyst of Agatha uh, uh, turning her switch on, or however you want to say it, as far as as far as self realization. And then she's turning into the to the Scarlet Witch, and uh, that's what we get at the end of this uh, show. There's not uh, spoiler or anything. There, there there isn't the big appearance that we were that we were led to believe by by everybody by you. <laughs> Uh, and you get you get you get the storylines wrapped up, okay? You some you, you know what happens to Agatha, you know what uh, happens to Jimmy. Darcy's kind of left in the cold in the ninth ninth uh, yeah. episode. She gets like one yeah. scene. Yeah, they and name check. Quick scene they name check her. I don't even think it was a, it was like a photograph or something. It wasn't. Even, I don't even think it was her. Her. Um, so they wrap things up in, in, a, in a just fine manner. Uh, the thing the thing now, as far as MCU goes, is we're jumping back ahead in time now. So. Uh, jumping back, probably, probably more towards the time of uh, of uh, Far From Home. I, Far From Home, I think, is eight months after eight months after it, okay. uh, that, and this is just weeks or days after. So, um, Falcon Winter Soldier is going to be a completely different show, and people are you know going to be jonesing for what happened with Wanda, what happened with Vision, and you're not going to find that out until Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I think uh, one of the things to to take into consideration here. Is this entire time that fans were going on? Who's the bad guy? Mm. Who's the bad guy? Right, right. Turns out Wanda was the bad guy. There was no manipulation. Right. Nobody messed with her. Right. She's done a horrible, horrible crime. Yes. She is definitely a villain. And um, whereas Sword trying to wipe, wipe her out or whatever was definitely against it. Right. Monica being so on board mm-hmm. with her and her grief because her mother had died and she mm-hmm. gets it. I'm mm-hmm. like, no. Mm-hmm. What she did was she took over an entire town, kidnapped all of these people. Yes. And I mean, you even get a little bit of that in this episode where people are like, you yeah. know, just let my daughter go kind of a thing. Yes, yes. Um, so the thing that they didn't do that a lot of people said they thought they were going to do, and I'm glad they didn't, was no Mephisto. Right. Mephisto needs to stay out of the Marvel Universe when he is used in the comic book universe, he is the devil, and he shows up to make silly little deals, which allows them to retcon and change history. If you need a character brought back to life, Mephisto shows up and does something silly, and all of a sudden you're dead, whatever is back. Or what, you know, he's used as this, you know, kind of Deuce Ex Machima kind of thing, and it's not good. Mm-hmm. It's never good. So I'm so glad. That they uh, they just didn't bother to do that. It would have been a lot to squeeze in on this this show, and I think they did good enough with with Agatha. Yeah. Um, but again, Agatha's not the bad guy. She was she, a bad person, yeah. but she did not 
This was all done before no, she, she got there. Right, she didn't create that. She I, was just a leech. Right, she, that was trying to. She's do trying it. to find out how how Wanda got her power. Yeah. Where's 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 all this coming from and all that. Even the manipulations that she does that they do in that episode where they flash back and show you all of them. Yeah. None of those are affecting Wanda to continue to do any of this. Right. It is to to tweak her to see if she can figure out the powers. And that one thing I did get back was in the flashback when she kills that dog. Mm-hmm. And the boys make a comment about, well, she can just bring him back to life. Right. The look on Agatha's face when she said she can bring her back to life right. was like, wait, well, hold up. She can what? Right. Like, she didn't understand all the stuff that she might be able to do. Did we ever get in the series how Agatha got in the hex? No, not that I'm aware of. what brought her attention to the hex? Or, or all of a sudden she just appears? And... I, I get a feeling she can sense magic. Like, she is drawn to, you know, okay. great sources of that magic. That makes sense. Like, otherwise, she would have tried that shit on Doctor Doom. Right. Not, I'm sorry, Doctor Strange. Right. Obviously, she knows there's a Sorcerer Supreme. Right. But she knows she can't get over on him. Right. She was drawn to Wanda's wild magic or the... Chaos magic. The chaos magic, mm-hmm. and then figured out, wait, she doesn't have a clue what she's doing. Mm-hmm. I can manipulate and control her. But again, in the long scope of things, she'll be made out to be the bad guy. Mm-hmm. But I mean, she's just the sun rising. It was that's going to happen, kind of. Thing. But that's she the thing. She anything. she manip- That's kind of cool. I didn't think about it until you just said that. Agatha didn't manipulate and control physically Wanda like Wanda was controlling the town. Yes. She did things behind the scenes that that emotionally manipulated yes. Wanda. So that was that was kind of cool. Well done. The entire series is well worth watching. Oh, yeah. Super popular. Um, Everybody loves it. I said, love Jimmy Woo. Really hoping. And they even make a comment. Monica makes one of these offhand comments. You look good with uh, with organization or leadership, uh, leadership or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, you know, us continuing extrapolating little <laughs> tiny little nuggets of whatever. Leadership. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe he gets to lead a team or something. He gets his handcuffs off. He goes, flourish. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. That was great. He, and and now he's like uh, he's on another show, The Young Rock. Oh, is he on that show? He is. Uh, so the idea of The Young Rock show is it's 2032 or something, uh-huh. and Dwayne Johnson is running for president. Okay. And he is having a sit down interview, and the sit down interview is Rock in slightly aged makeup with that guy okay. doing, being the interviewer, and them then telling stories from the Rock's oh. you know, childhood. That's cool. Um, and so it's kind of fun to see him because he's got. That great, his sense of humor and his comedy is just so, it's deadpan with the, I know it's deadpan, like the flourish thing, and mm-hmm. little things like that. So yeah. he's, he's fun in that as well. Uh, sticking with the MCU, did you see the MODOK teaser? I went and watched it because you mentioned it, uh-huh. but I was a little confused because my YouTube was bringing up stuff from as far as four months ago with MODOK teasers. Mm, so MODOK teasing has been going on a long time. <laughs> it looks like... Look at him. He deserves to be teased. It looks like a robot chicken kind of a thing. Yeah. Like with MODOK, who is... Um, Murder I, or... I, was, I thought it was machine only designed for killing. Yes. But I think they said it was like mental organism designed only oh, for killing. Maybe, but maybe. Something like that. Yeah. He's been a silly character yes. in the universe forever. He's a giant head yes. with little tiny arms and things that floats around. And, and in the 70s, he was really kind of scary to me as a kid. I sure. really, I was like, what? That's the most weird, disproportionate, scary thing around. And, and uh, But I never really knew, knew much about his history. I knew he was like an AIM uh, thing, I think. But um, yeah, so they're doing, a like you said, an animated series. And it's a, um, voiced by Patton Oswalt, who's very funny. Um, I assume he, if he's involved, he's also got something to do with the writing as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be, it'll be a, I don't know when it comes out, but it'll definitely be a different twist on or a, or a different direction for the for the MCU as far as um, you know, maybe not not so serious. Uh, but. It's a cartoon featuring either claymation style animation or mm-hmm. actual toys yeah. being used. Like the, it, it has a very robot chickeny right. kind of a feel to it with a little more polish. Mm-hmm. Um, is he the voice? Is Patton Oswalt the yeah. voice of Modoc? Mm-hmm. So he's been involved. He obviously loves geekdom. Yeah, he's a super He's made geek. his living off of it. Yeah. I mean, it's been very good to him, and he is very good to it. Yeah. And it's, it's fun to see him, you know, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to this and, and popping up in other things. So hopefully he continues to have an active role in Marvel Universe stuff. And mm-hmm. Just as I said, we, we as much as we love WandaVision and all that stuff, it is nice to have something a little more fun yeah. and interesting. Did you read, Sean, because you own a comic shop? I do own, I own comic shop. 121 East Sycamore, two stores that way. 
Did you read Stray Dogs? I did. Did tell me what you tell me what you thought about it. Um, it was an interesting concept. It uh, follows uh, dogs who real dogs, not you know Pluto right. slash right. Goofy or anything like that. Real I'm not dogs. sure Goofy's a dog. But go ahead. Um, he is. He's not. Okay. Um, and you get this weird little story because they're talking, and it's done in this animated kind of a style right, to it. Right, right. Uh, but then all of a sudden, there's a twist about three quarters of the way through, and right? it gets real, real serious. Real dark. Real dark, <laughs> real quick. Right. Um, so without trying to ruin that particular twist, it's a little hard to talk about this particular book. Yeah. But Do you have any copies in the store? Um, I had one yesterday, okay. and that was the one I took home to read Spoil and it. brought back. Spoil it. Um, so the idea is that it is about dogs in their lives and this one particular little dog and you see her going to the vet with her owner and her, the vet explaining that dogs don't really have long-term memories right. according to this vet. Now, right. I don't know the real I don't know the reality of this. And it could vary by um, breed because some dogs are trainable, some dogs are not sure. real, real trainable. So. Um, so the idea though is that all of a sudden this dog now is in a different home with a bunch of other dogs. Like I mean, a room full like of ten. Ten or eleven yeah, dogs yeah. in this room. They're all super excited about the new new dog and right. all this stuff. Right. And the guy that's bringing her in seems, you know, you only see him from the feet down. Right. And he seems, you know, okay. Until she has a flashback that this guy's a serial killer. Right. That kills people who have dogs right. and then takes their dog. So in the book, the dogs talk to each other. Yes. Okay. They're able to communicate. And we also see thought balloons and things for, for, the, for the, the lead dog, if you want to say. But, um, you know, obviously they, they don't talk in a way that humans... Uh, you know, can understand what they're saying. That, that would be silly. But but the dogs can talk to each other, which because it's a comic character. They're sure. characters. They they all have you know names. They're all very different dogs. Yeah, very different big, styles. And so and they have names that that you know yeah that looks like a Roscoe or whatever. So um, but yeah, it, it one of the variant covers was a Silence of the Lambs uh, variant cover of of the dog that's in the the, bu- uh, the basket. In the basket. Yeah, uh, and so uh, it's not necessarily that not that story. I don't believe, sure. but. You see that through the through the dog's little flashbacks, he has a flashback of this guy coming into his owner's house, which is which is a female, and pushing his way in, and and uh, it's the, it turns out I don't you maybe, but it turns out to be the guy that the guy that has that dog now, and yeah. and is collecting all these dogs, and starts to get worried, and not, not only is it a, is it a dog that is uh, in a new place and and is nervous about the surroundings and whatnot, and so some of the other dogs are trying to console it and and, and bring it in, and some of them just don't care. And, but they're saying, oh, you're crazy. That's not, this, this guy isn't a killer. He's the master. He brings us food. This is where he keeps us snacks. This is where he keeps us warm. He takes care of us. He's the master. You must be crazy. And uh, then at some point, one of the dogs is like, you know what? I'm ready to believe in you. We'll, 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 we'll investigate this and find out what the deal is. And then that's when they go do the callback from the very first page where the vet was talking about the dog not remembering anything. And the dog's like, what are you talking about? Investigate what? I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. So the main dog, who is your main clue, is... Uh, so it's dogs with memento and It's 31st killers. dates. 31st <laughs> dates meets... <laughs> Mike, I'm ready to believe you. <laughs> anyway, it was interesting, and uh, I'm, was, I'll let Casey read. I think she, she It's a well it. done. It was an interesting concept, yeah. and that's, what I, that's one of the things I love about the industry right now is we are getting... Um, all kinds of different tales. Mm-hmm. Like the the spandex superhero thing is obviously still hot. It makes a lot of money, but the outside industry beyond Marvel and DC are making their money on horror comics, yeah. suspense comics, comedy comics. Um, there's so much stuff out there. So if you think that uh, comics are just you know Superman, Batman, Cap, mm-hmm. and the the M- the MCU or the DCEU, uh, that's not the case. Right. It's uh, you you've got so much cool stuff out there right now to be reading. That it's a it's another golden age, in the um, the amount of kind of materials and genres that are currently active yeah. and uh, really really exciting. So. So, uh, speaking of Superman, did you happen to watch uh, Superman and Lois? No, I didn't see that. It's another CW show, though, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, they just they they churn that stuff. Well, arrows. They gone. don't want to be the DC. Uh, they don't want to be the DC channel. Listen, I don't think that guy works for him anymore. <laughs> he probably does. I don't think he does. Because guess what they are. They are the DC channel. They absolutely Between are. them and HBO Max. Yeah. Man. Like, when you watch their promos, their CW promos, where everybody's doing that, you know, uh, it's Flash and Supergirl. And uh, and then you're like, it's probably who, not Supergirl anymore. Who's that guy? You know, it, the plainclothes guy. Oh. You know, and then and another, another hero, show. another hero, and then some plain guy. You know, oh, it's, it's it's really weird. I'll never See. let that die, though. That's one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. Was the big exec coming out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we don't want to become the DC channel. Yeah. Too bad. 
Yeah. Too bad. Oh, you want paid? Turns out we're not allergic to money. Yeah. So I think Supergirl's got another season. I think it's. I mean, this might be its last season. That's but what I, I think meant. it's that's canceled. I mean. Yeah. So well, that's canceled. I heard Black Lightning's canceled too. It is. It is. So um, you got. Uh, well, you got some of those uh, CWC, not Seed, uh, the DC Universe channel. Some mm-hmm. of those are coming over. Titans, I think, is coming over after after one of those leaves. Well, speaking of the DC channel, mm-hmm. because that's dead and mm-hmm. has been dead for quite some time. Now we've just saw CBS All Access, um, not necessarily die, but pull a phoenix and be reborn as Paramount. Plus. Right. So if you have CBS All Access, which is where you're getting your original Star Trek content, when you go to that app now, it doesn't say CBS All Access because I went and tried right. it. Right. It does say it's changed to Paramount Plus. Yes. The only thing you have to do is you have to re sign in. As l- once you re sign in, it's the exact same sort of thing. I went through it this morning and then said to myself, why am I still paying for this? Yeah. I got my one month free when when COVID started. They did oh, the whole, right. we're going to give you one month free. And now I've been paying it for it ever since. And I've watched. That's how they get you. I think the only thing I watched all the way through was the Star Trek Below Decks, oh. which is hilarious. Yeah. I couldn't even finish Picard after being told by people who I really respect their opinion of yeah. how good it was. I thought Picard was just okay. I was like, <laughs> I still, it's been a year and I can't finish, what, seven episodes? It's one of those shows I watched, like, for, I watched uh, for conversation. So when, when that comes up, I can I can give an opinion. But uh, I, but, but I really like Discovery, man. Discovery, I watched Discovery. Discovery season two is fantastic. I it's might it's have the to best retry. Trek I've seen in a long I time. I may try retry Discovery uh-huh. uh, because they just ticked me off with the launch of it. Yeah. The first one was free, yeah. except here in the local area, they screwed it up. And you didn't even get it for free right. because it was uh, interrupted by something, uh, or, and then they didn't bother to re-air it. So yeah. it's it's a decent show, and uh, the second, like I said, the second season was fantastic. And you're gonna get it. Pike. What season are we on now? Uh, three just wrapped up uh, okay. f- a few months ago. No, no, is this Pike running the Enterprise? Is this the thing they're doing like weird time travel or something? Well, here's what. So uh, season one and two are set before Kirk. Okay. okay. Well, and, and so because you, you, you have Pike, so. season three they've jumped ahead. Twenty thousand years or however how long. So they they want they want to be able to free themselves of canon okay. and do and do do their stories out uh, you know the way they want. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, they. Uh, but you're gonna get Pac, uh, Pac, Spock, Pike, and and number one are all in the new Ooh, show. Ooh, number one. She's in the second season too. Is she too? Yeah. Who's number one? Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca Romaine. Really? Yeah. It looks nothing like Michelle Barrett. <laughs> they no. changed that up a little bit. Well, that's cool. I will definitely have to go back and see. As I said, I'm on the fence. I've got enough streaming services now yeah. that I, I honestly, I can't watch them all anyway. So until I hear something about something exciting on CBS Access, yeah. I thought the good fight was going to get me to watch it, uh-huh. but uh, it's not the good wife. It's just not quite the same. We watched The Stand. Yeah. It was pretty good. It wasn't great, but it was worth watching. Was it? Is it done, or was yes. it a series, done. or did they just drop it all at once? Six or seven episodes. I can't remember which. I mean, they've tra- the Stand uh, is such. I but it was love we- the book. It was weekly, but it's such a such a heady concept with so much going on yeah. that I just don't know that it can ever be yeah. really done up. I think it was done well. Uh, they did change some things in the last couple episodes, but other than that, it was very it was very true to the material. I had just when when I heard that it went into production, I reread the stand again, and uh, so I had it, I had it pretty fresh in my mind. And so you reread when, the stand. Yeah, I've read it uh, three times. I read that all back before they created. They put out the longer edition, uh-huh. which is probably the standard now. It is. I read the original, yeah. and I read that in less than 24 hours. Oh, I couldn't do it. There's no way. And I was a kid. It was uh, summer. I parked myself in a bed and read <laughs> until I stood up, and, and I'm not joking, passed out. <laughs> I'd, been, I'd been reading for so long, uh-huh. laying down, that when I stood up, uh-huh. I, the blood and whatnot just... Sure. I... Cheetos Boom, straight down. So, uh-huh. so you know, Captain Trips got me. <laughs> he did. So, he took did. me right, right the hell out. Uh, anyway, back to Superman. It, it was got, it good? Well, yeah, it was it was good. Um, uh, really? Yeah. It yeah. was it was very family oriented. Okay. Okay, because he's got two adult or two teenage sons. Oh. Him and Lois do. Crazy. And basically, the first episode the first episode is about and it's a little longer than an hour, but uh, about them having circumstances happen that they have to move back to Smallville, okay. and they're going to take over the farm again. And are, are either of his parents alive? That's what happens in the first episode. Oh, okay. uh, you, Dad dies g- again. The best part, and I told Casey this, the best part is they didn't they didn't try to retell the origin o- over a first episode. They did it yeah. in about the first three minutes. Okay. And uh, so you see Jonathan die in the first three minutes, gotcha. and then we get into some story, and then uh, Ma, Ma dies, and that's the catalyst that what? brings him back. Yeah. They wipe out both of them? Yes. That's a horrible yes. decision. 
You could, I could tell they weren't going to be around because I didn't recognize either of the actors when they first when they first hit the screen. I'm like, that's that's a pivotal role. With the fan fiction in my head, yeah. you keep one of them around right. to have that older right. figure. Right. I guess they're probably going to use Lois in that um, thing as a sounding board. I guess. I don't but. know. They're parents, you know, and they're they're struggling with two two maybe have powers, maybe don't have powers, uh, well, we teenage, don't, teenage We don't know board. that yet? By the end of the episode, you do. Welcome to CW. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was pretty good. It, w it dealt a lot with the kids and their real-world stuff before we even got into that. I have not seen it. Yeah. I've not seen it. Mm -hmm. One has powers by the end of this episode. One doesn't, but will develop them later on. How close am I? Right on. <laughs> huh. <laughs> welcome to Welcome to CW. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's cool. Uh, so if you're a CW show, by the by, let's say by season three, every cast member will well, have at well, least enough. been flashed for a day or whatever. Something you know, weird. At, at the very least. Yeah, this kid who feels left out right now and yeah. is upset and is bitter at the end of the episode yeah. and why me? Trust me, kid. Give yourself some time. You're, you'll end up with something. Mm -hmm. you, you'll probably become a villain, but then be brought back into the fold as you are, you know. And check uh, reality at the door and everything, but it was almost laughable when... Clark shows them, boys, 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 boys. I'm Superman. I, you know, I kept this from you for your own protection, and we were really worried about one or two of you, and, and what would happen if one had it and one didn't, and and but and they're like, Dad, we've seen Superman. We know you're not. So, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did pick up a truck, but still, that's what he did. He goes like that. <laughs> da, 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 da. Did they use uh, the John Williams music no. at all? No. 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 Because that costs that costs a little. Yeah, that you costs. Want, money. You want Johnny's music? <laughs> you got to pay Johnny's money. Um, in the world of half said, shadowed rumors, I mean, it was said. Uh, one of the heads of, I believe, WB came out in an interview with X amount whatever, and simply said um, that they are very happy with their relationship with J.K. Rowling in the Harry Potter universe, mm. and that they're sure that there's a lot of great stories that can be told in that universe. Which has led to rampant speculation about another because right. was it HBO Max was the rumor that there's going to be a Harry Potter series. Harry Potter series, yeah. So the the uh, wildfires are burning again. A series in that world. I don't keep know. in mind we still haven't finished the second movie series, which has almost become a train wreck in how it's going. As a huge Harry Potter fan, I gotta say the first movie in the out of our two that we've got so far was was a fun little movie. We got introduced to characters. That second movie is just a train wreck. I didn't even watch it. It's so bad. And uh, I think we're supposed to have five movies in this series. I bet you don't. And they are taking forever. <laughs> We've got Johnny Depp out because he is... If we make a third one, we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to tell you so that right now. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't think they will. I think Rawlings has got too much uh, money in play in this. So, um, But know. it's taking forever. COVID, mm -hmm. I think, has slowed it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But sure. even between, like, with the Harry Potter movies, we were getting one... What, every two years or something like that? Maybe, yeah. Um, my thinking oh, is... Oh, the original ones? Yes. Yeah, yes. My thinking has always been, and I still stand by this, absolutely. It takes so long to do those seven books mm -hmm. that now it's been, I think they said 2001 uh, was the last movie. Was it? I think so. Something like that. So Could if be. that's the case, you know, we're on to like 20 years. It's been a while. It's time to just redo those movies. No. Absolutely. No. Why would you ever stop printing that money? If nothing else, why would I not throw $150 million at at least the first movie to see what the fans would do? Are they willing to show back up? Because the truth is, if you're a big fan, you know they left out major portions of the books here and there. Sure. Even if it's not major portions, it's almost like a Lord of the Rings thing. Tolkien wrote so much crap that didn't make the screen that if I was to tell you, here's some of the other stuff. I, I can't think of any, any major franchise that has rebooted. I just, I think the fans would eat it up. I would go again. People would go again. I would I'm, go but, again. But is it necessary? So, when has Hollywood ever given a damn? <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit, what, four? Uh-huh. Not a reboot. Okay. <laughs> Smokey and the Bring Bandit. Bring Burt back. The, the wheel, being, Burt, wheel Burt Reynolds we, out here. <laughs> we don't, we, Hollywood doesn't give a damn about what you need. It's about the fat cash. And if I'm that bean counter, I'm like, I'm yeah. writing a check for $150 million yeah. to see if, we can catch lightning in a bottle again. I would almost guess, and I'm going to say life in our lifetime. I'm going to say in your lifetime, you won't see a, a Raiders reboot. Uh, you might see, you'll see another movie, but you won't see a reboot. You won't see a Star Wars reboot, a retelling of the original trilogy or anything like There's that. There's no point. 
That's what. That's exactly. Exactly. That exactly. No point. Exactly. Well, because they're going to continue those on. Well, there sounds like they're going to so continue on Harry Potter. With Raiders, I'm like, we need a we need a fifth, sixth, seventh movie. That that should have been happening all all along. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. And I'm love Harrison Ford, but you it know won't what? happen. It won't happen while he's it's, alive. It's time to move on. And I bet it. I bet it'll be ten years after he's gone. And that's too bad because he really needs to pass that torch. Yeah. He needs to be the one that you know kind of says. This is my guy. I think if they'd have found so. somebody that was likable, they could have done it with with uh, the thir the fourth one, uh, you know. But oh. that nobody likes that. Uh, Shia LaBeouf. That mud man. That it was a horrible character. Bad character, and he's not a good it's actor. Not a movie and that he's people enjoy. Not likable. He has no charisma yeah. at all. He's a great actor. Indy had no either. I disagree. Indy has I no. Indy has no charisma. Indy, Indy Fury. Is, Indy's all charisma. Yeah, he was great he's in that. Great in Fury. He was great in he that. He is amazing in the roles that he does. Mm. Now the fact is, is that he is toxic. And yeah. You don't want him around your set or your cast or right. any of that nonsense. Right. But to say he's not a great actor, mm. I think you have to I draw the line. I think he's okay. Somebody can be an asshat and still be a great actor. I mean, I deal with you on this show every week, so that hurts. Words hurt. Know. Speaking of toxic, one last thing. Uh, there's a. This is a. Britney I think Spears? a little bit more than a rumor that uh, they'll be replacing on the new uh, Rangers of the New Republic uh, on Disney+. Plus. They're going to be replacing uh, Cara Dune, who we've covered uh, ad, ad nauseum here. Uh, we'll be replacing her with uh, Hera Syndulla. Syndulla? Syndulla. I don't know who that is. You, you actually sent me a text saying they're yeah. Hera, and I was like, from Rebels. Wonder Woman's mom? From Rebels. Oh, okay. No, okay. I didn't know it was a Star Wars thing. Yes. So I, yes. I thought it was the name of an actress. Somebody, no, I've no, never no. heard of a Hera. No, no, before. they're not replacing the Cara Dune character oh, that's awesome. with another actor. They're okay, replacing okay. that character with another character. Oh, oh she's great. Yeah. You get it, uh, what, Twilight? Uh, Twilight. Yeah. yeah. She's, and then, that, oh, that means I probably get Chopper. You, you may. I get a live action Chopper. You may. Did oh, he, I'm in heaven. Did he survive the. He's in Rogue One. Oh, is he? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, cool. you, see, you see him go by, um, and on YouTube, there's something called uh, Chopper Unedited, mm -hmm. that if you're an adult, you need to go watch <laughs> okay. it, because he's a droid, so he just speaks sure. in the booth oh, and I wouldn't. all that. Right, right. Well, somebody went through and, and did like a translation. A translation. <laughs> okay. If you know anything about Chopper, he is my favorite droid. Okay. I love Chopper. All right. Um, it's just nothing but him cursing and saying uh, the line from boys to everybody, okay. and just being incredibly rude. Cool. So I'll check that out. Oh, it's well worth it. All right. All right, everybody, that was your Geek Storm for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like, hit subscribe, and uh, leave a comment below, and we'll get back to you sometime at random. Mike is also going to be sending out glossy 8x10 signed to all of his friends down in the cell block. So but I won't personalize them because I don't do want to see that stuff on eBay, okay? I'm going to write who is to, to, to Mike, to Jim, to Billy, because I don't want to see it on eBay. You just make sure when you ask it, you like pick the most generic name ever. So Mike's a good one because everybody uses that. So, all right, everybody, be groovy. <laughs>